How's it going everyone? It's Donald back with another video and today I'm going to show you how to uh, concatenate videos with FFmpeg. Uh, if you're not sure what concatenation means, it essentially means if I have video file A and video file B, I'm going to take B and stick it at the uh, end of A. Um, this can be useful if you've split uh, sections of another video out in the clips, done separate editing, and then you want to basically put them back together. Um, there are going to be three ways to do this. Two of them are really quick, but have some conditions with them. Then there's a third one that um, takes a while to do because you have to, it involves having to do a transcoding. Uh, and also the syntax is probably going to be a little weird. Uh, but I will explain all that to you. But the advantage of the third way is, is that you can essentially take, as far as I've used it, any uh, files with anything and any codecs and uh, concatenate them together. Before we get started, I'd appreciate it if you left me a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I'm really trying to grow this channel and any help would be appreciated. Now with that out of the way, let's get over to my terminal. And uh, if we look at my directory here, I have a bunch of uh, files left over from me basically doing, uh, I'll call it FFmpeg mad science experiments. Now I'm going to show you uh, the first way is using the uh, demuxer approach to doing this. Um, the uh, condition with being able to do this approach is that the files that you are wanting to concatenate together have to have the same video and audio encoding. If you do this with files that do not have the same encoding, um, when it, you get the result, uh, it's probably going to be a little borked. I accidentally did this the other day with a file and the videos were the same encoding, but the audio wasn't. So whenever it got to the uh, part where it would start playing the second video, um, the audio was uh, all screwed up. This is put that way. So the way you do the demuxer approach for concatenating files is you start with um, dash F, which forces FFmpeg to use a certain format when it's uh, processing the data stream. And there's a, there's, a con there's a concat format, which basically says, hey, I just want you to take these inputs and put them together. That's, that's basically what it's saying. Now, the way you usually do this is you don't specify multiple inputs like you do some other ways. You, uh, you put all of the uh, files that you want to concatenate together and just just some text file it doesn't really matter what it is and it will read from that and concatenate them together in the order they appear in the file uh, to show you what i have i have a file here you'll see it called list.txt if we look at it real quick you will just see there are two files in there it's going to be using uh, this intro clip that i took from a bigger recording and outro clip from the same recording and it's going to uh, combine them together. So let me get that command back up the way I was doing it. Uh, dash F, uh, can't type. I can't type today. There we go. Uh, so we were to pass in that text file as the input, which is a little different because up to this point, anytime I've been showing you anything, you were passing in files, like actual files. This time we're passing in a list of files into as an input. And we're going to do dash copy. This prevents it from doing a, uh, a transcoding. It's going to basically just take the files, encode it as they are, and just basically put them in another container format, but by concatenating the streams together. At the end. And I'm going to call this, um, I call this demux. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to let this run because this should take like maybe barely even a second. Yes, overwrite. Uh, okay, took two seconds. So to show you real quick what these two things are separately, let's look real fast. So you see it's just a, it's a little recording from Animal Crossing. Uh, I think this one's like seven seconds long. Yeah, it's, it's gone. And um, now we're going to show you the, um, the outro that was appended onto it. Dude, can't I can't type. I, I swear to God, I can't type today. Uh, yeah, so this one is about 35 seconds long. This is her basically showing off the thing that she made. So assuming 
that the command I just ran worked. What should happen was it'll play the first part and then immediately start playing the outro. So we're gonna try that right now. So b uh d the mux concat dot mp4. Okay, it's running. You'll see the length looks right. Okay, we're about five seconds in, so it should just start. And there you go. The these two video files have been uh concatenated together with no problems. Now the second easy fast way to do this is called uh the what's called a concat protocol. This essentially works on the fact that there are some very few, mind you, very few uh video and audio encodings that allow you to do what's called file level concatenation. Uh this essentially means you can combine them in the same way that you can say just add text to the end of a text file. You can essentially just take uh the first uh file the first file and just slap it on to the end of the, of the second one and it, should, it works fine. Um there's only the only video encoding that I know of off the top of my head that this works is something called like MPEG transport stream, which has a file extension of like .ts. And I have a couple of these in here that I have made or I thought I did. Maybe I don't. Uh I will edit in a part where I make those real quick because I thought I had those somewhere else. Uh Wait, never mind. I know where those are. Those are in mine, I think. Uh, let's see. Videos and my stuff. Yeah, okay, there they are. Uh, so the way this works, if you have a uh, encoding that can do file level concatenation, uh, which the way you do it with this is uh, you let's see. Yeah, all right, okay. So it's gonna look a little weird because instead of uh having using like a filter or passing in a list, we're using this very specific like concat uh protocol. And then you you put the word concat and then you put a colon and then you start putting in the name of the uh the files. So I have two here. One's called intermediate and .ts, and that one's called intermediate1.ts. And uh, I will show you those two clips individually. I think it was just like these little simple things I had, did for like five seconds to test this. So we're gonna have intermediate.ts, uh, and then you put a, a vertical line in between each file, interme oops, intermediate1.ts. Okay. Uh, and then, let's see, then you do, you you're copying again because you're not doing a re-encode and then i think you just if i recall you just write it out so i'm gonna call it uh i'm not gonna call this i will call it protocol concat dot mp4 uh we'll just do ts yeah uh yeah okay sorry done so let's look at those two files individually so let's run this it'll just be me Ah, deja vu, I'm seeing double. Okay. Uh, this should only be like, yeah, it's like 12 seconds, okay. Uh, so now we're gonna look at the second one. It is second test. Uh, now, what we should have now is these two things combined. So was it protocol, yeah. So we'll let this play for a minute. Listen to me, you get to hear me twice. Isn't that amazing? And there you go. And apparently it did. Okay, so that is, you have seen the demuxing approach and you have seen the uh, protocol approach. Now for the third one, which is going to be kind of weird. So let me go back to the uh, directory I was in originally. Yeah. Okay. So this one is going to be a little weird. You, the advantages though, is that you can combine videos that have different encodings. 
uh, with the caveat, as I mentioned, that this does do a transcoding. So the way that this works is you have to build something called a complex filter graph, and I will show you what that looks like. So this doesn't, um, you don't pass in a list of files like you do with the first one. You explicitly list, uh, uh, pa pass in um, separate input sources for this one. So we're gonna have the overwatch uh, beanie intro mp4. And then we have another one where it's the outro, but I re-encoded it to be like uh, like flash media thing, some other flash uh, video encoding. Now the option you want for this is called filter complex, as you see. Now I'm gonna start a new line because this, this gets a little weird as you can see in the preview. Now, normally when you do filters in FFmpeg, um, you what it, it just takes the, the video streams that you're giving it from your input files, does something to it, and then automatically will use it in the um, the right the, the output of the file, the the thing that you're re-encoding out to. Filter complex, you have to explicitly specify what streams of data you are working on, and the syntax is going to be a little weird. Okay, so. I'm gonna try to take this slow because it might be a little confusing. So, the syntax for specifying what you're working on is this weird syntax where it's um, in square brackets, there's a number, there's a colon, then you'll use this usually either see a V or A. So, what this is saying is that I want to work on the first video input. And I want to I want the, the first input file and I want to use its video stream. Now, if you're not from a programming background, you see a zero and go, what the hell? What do you mean it's the first one? So a uh, very minor programming lesson in programming, whenever you have like a collection of like data in a, like a, some kind of some kind of like an array or a list, they are uh, indexed starting at zero, not one, zero. So when you see this and you see zero, this is saying whatever this list of inputs is that I gave at the very part, start of the command, I went to use the first one. An easy way to remember this, uh, especially if you're like just now learning coding and trying to get your head into the game of whole like at lists start at zero, is that whatever you would normally think it is, just take one from it. So I want the first one. Well, in programming world, the first one has an index of zero, not one, okay? So uh, try to keep that in mind as I keep going forward. And um, I'm still operating on some other streams of data. I'm gonna have, again, the first input, and I want to use A, which is the audio stream from it. And then I want to use uh, one, which is the second input, and I want to use the video from it, and then, as you might guess, I want to use the audio from it as well. This is specifying what the data stream inputs are for the filter. Now, the filter we're going to use is called concat, which sounds familiar because we've already used something similar to this in other areas. And let's see, it equals, and the inputs for this are n, which specifies the number of uh, input sources. In our case, there are two. And then you have two other ones that you have to specify, or at least every time I've used this, you have to specify. You have V, which says of those inputs of those input sources, how many video streams does each one have individually? And this will also decide how many video streams get written out from the from the filter. And in this case, we they each have one. And then my guess, same thing for A. A, each one of those sources only has one audio stream, so to only write out one audio stream. Now, normally when you run a filter, the normal way in FFmpeg, this automatically gets sent out to the output file. But in this case, you have to just basically store this in uh, a, a named location. So the first output of this will be the new concatenated video stream. And I'm going to call it out V. You have to wrap the name of the 
uh, data you've created in this the same bracket, the square bracket syntax. And then the second thing it created will be, as you might guess, the audio stream. And I'm gonna call this out A. Uh, now, you can keep going with this if you have like multiple things you wanna do, but at this point, I am done with the, uh, the complex filter graph part. And so we passed in some data streams, we concatenated them and then stored them in these, these names, out A and out B. Now, how do we tell FFmpeg don't use the just don't use the straight input from the the files. Use these new data streams that I have created. Well, there's a there's a uh, option called map, and this tells FFmpeg, hey, don't use the normal video streams from the input. Use the thing this thing that was created during some process, and you have to use the same square bracket syntax. So. I'm going to tell it, hey, I want you to use out B. And then you have to do the same thing again for the audio. I want you to use out A. And then finally, you say whatever you want this to be called. Um, I believe, uh, did I already make this somewhere? I did. Overwatch, Beanie, Complex. Yeah. So I'm not going to let this run because this, like I said, this, this will transcode this. This will take at least a few minutes. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to let it overwrite. Uh, so, but to show you what it will look like, as you recall, this is just a simple, maybe like 40 second long clip when they're both combined. So if we look at the Overwatch Beanie complex, you will see that it is combined. Even though these two video files had completely different video encodings and probably, yeah, and probably audio encodings. So there you go. Now you know how to combine videos quickly that have either the same encoding, or if they're one of those really special cases where you could do what's called file level concatenation, and you even know how to combine video files that have different encodings. Um, as far as I've used so far, there is no um, uh, restrictions with that. I've tried it with a couple different combinations and they've all were fine. Uh, not to say that this may that may not work sometimes, but everything I've, time I've tried it, it's worked fine. Uh, so that's all I have for this video today. Uh, if this helped you out at all, leave me a like, subscribe down below. If you get confused and ask a question, leave me a comment down below, and I will try to answer the best as I can. Uh, Y'all come on back now, and I'll see you next time.